first glance, these insects might look to you as some sort of wasp or bee, but these are actually flies, members of the family Cerfidae, also known as hoverflies or flowerflies. Those names come from the fact that they have a very similar appearance, flight style, and pollination habit to bees and wasps. This amazing adaptation found in this family is called Batesian mimicry. More famous examples of this include certain kinds of snakes and butterflies, but what makes hoverflies truly interesting is it's an entire family of mimics. Named for the intricate black markings on their bodies, genus Toxomerus, or the calligrapher flies, are some of the best bee and wasp mimics in the family. This beautifully patterned one, called the black-sided calligrapher, has actually some blue markings on the abdomen as well as a blue stripe on the thorax. My favorite calligrapher I found while recording this video though was my lifer maze calligrapher, named after its habit of being found in areas with tall grainy grasses. While common throughout much of North America, this species is actually quite rare in Southeast Florida, and it was great to find a small population of these guys in a little patch of tall grass. While this individual is a little paler, it still has that same unmistakable abdomen pattern. And you can even see that distinctive pattern, even with their wings closed. In my opinion though, the plushbacks are even better than the calligraphers at imitating bees. They are much larger bodied than the calligraphers, and I even have a hard time telling some plushbacks like this northern plushback, apart from honeybees while they're in flight. The double banded plushback is very bright orange in its overall coloration, and as you might guess, its name comes from the two bold black stripes on the thorax. Another interesting species is the bicolored plushback, which is very similar in overall coloration to the double banded plushback, however it only has one very bold black stripe on the thorax rather than two. My personal favorite plushback I found while recording was this white-faced plushback, which is a lifer for me. It is overall a very pale species, with a very noticeably bright white face and creamy colored patches on the abdomen. While all the other species I've shown you have been pretty generalized bee and wasp mimics, this common green jewel fly might actually be the best mimic out of all of them. This species has mastered the appearance and flight style of the dilemma orchid bee to the point where I actually can't tell them apart in flight unless I get a good picture or it lands. The rusty-tailed spittlebug killer is a very effective mimic of thin-waisted wasp species such as paper wasps, mud daubers, and potter wasps. Like all of their surfids, the adults feed on flower nectar. However, the name spittlebug killer comes from the habit of larvae eating hemipteran insects such as spittlebugs and leafhoppers. While open grassy fields with wildflowers are great spots for finding most of the hoverflies here in South Florida, some of our more elusive and strange looking species such as this beautifully blue colored ultramarine hoverfly can be found in dark wooded areas like hammocks and swamps. While the scarlet hoverfly's unmistakable bright red color and elongated appearance make it hard to miss, it is actually quite an uncommon sight all throughout its range. This rare species is found in the Caribbean and as well as South and Central Florida. I saw a few of these at this little spot right here, and while it was incredible to finally get this lifer, it still wasn't the best record of the day. My personal favorite record that the entire few weeks long recording process was this absolutely beautiful yellow hoverfly found in the Caribbean in Florida. While this species has been reported in North and Central Florida, this was the first recorded appearance of this species in South Florida. While this is the only individual I saw at this spot, and believe me I tried looking for more, I still believe that there is a breeding population here, which would be incredible if I can prove that. It's also incredible to think about how this tiny little species from Cuba has managed to make so many local breeding populations here 